Today on the corner, we're going to tackle cooling with our Vox Lab Aquila. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to the corner. It's me, Jeff, and I just want to say my original intro, I had no audio on it, so I had to re-record this, and that's why you see I'm kind of starting to take this apart right now. So let's back up a bit. With the Vox Lab Aquila, they have an injected molded cooling fan on it and it just is a snap in place piece and I've had it fall off on me actually. I've been like, oh crap, did I break it? Oh no. And I have a look at it and it's like just a little snap on piece. So what I'm going to do this week is I actually, I downloaded um, off of Thingiverse. I downloaded off of Thingiverse this cooling shroud that I'm going to replace it with. Now there's a couple of them out there, but I chose this one because you don't have to do any modifications to your printer. You don't have to add an extra fan. You don't have to do any soldering, any rewiring, anything. It should be a direct swap. And it's going to allow you to have cooling on both sides of your nozzle by simply ducting some of the air from the fan to the other side. Uh, it does have a BL touch mount. I do have a BL touch on here currently, but you don't need a BL touch in order to use this. You can still use manual leveling without a problem. So this cooling fan is actually a remake of the Stanza cooling fan uh, that's used on an Ender 3. It um, was done by a gentleman named Jeremy Lollett. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. The link's going to be in Thingiverse down below. I also, you'll see going forward, um, when we go back, <laughs> You'll see going forward, when I go back in time to show you the uh, original thing here, what I did was I, um, I printed out two overhang tests, one facing each side, so towards the fan and away from the fan. And these are going to be the control, and I'll show you these in a second, but Basically, in a nutshell, what we're going to do is we're going to install it and then we're going to reprint these and we're going to see if we notice a, let's see if we can get some focus on here, notice a bit of difference with the cooling. I'm going to take a photo of this. We'll have it big so you guys can see where all the layer lines are and then we'll do a comparison at the end of this video. So I'm going to continue working on this now and hopefully I don't have any more technical issues okay so let's get at her so here i'll be preparing to mount the new shroud um it's actually quite interesting i believe there's only two screws that hold it on but it holds it on quite steadily and it allows the fan to blow down and instead of one side it's actually split so it will go to the one side and then it will go around the front of the shroud and then go to the back of the shroud so you get cooling from both sides so this hopefully will improve as you can see on the print bed currently I have run my control test with the two overhangs and I'll just be marking them um, um, near and far basically or near to the fan and far away so as you can see here, I'm going to inspect them and we're going to show how you can see that the one side, um, the one by my fingers here, actually has a little bit worse cooling. You can see it on the second bend, how it starts in between the second and third bend, as opposed to the other one, which is actually not too bad. Uh, yeah, I'm pointing to it right now. That's kind of the area that we're going to try and see if we can improve on a bit by hopefully having the cooling on both sides. So I'll start disassembly of the stock shroud by removing my BL touch and my BL touch mount. Uh, again, you do not need to use a BL touch with this mount. I just have it, so I have to remove that first before I go on to removing the shroud itself. I am placing a piece of paper towel onto the print bag just to protect it in case I drop any screws or anything. I don't want to scratch it or anything. So 
So there are two hex nuts um, behind the carriage that need to be removed. And I'm pointing those out right now. So you just have to get those first. So once you have the screws on the back removed, the uh, shroud basically clips in. It is a little fiddly, but um, it just it it's a pressure fit, so you'll just have to pop it off carefully. And there's a zip tie here that we're going to just snip off for now, just to give us a little bit of flexibility moving stuff around. So I'm just going to spin this around so you guys can see this. So all right. So there's two fan. There's two fans in here. So we're going to remove this fan first. By there's a screw here, and there's a screw over here. So let's take this out. the cooling fan there's a screw right here right here for the cooling fan that you have to remove first all right remove the cooling fan screw and then this should come right off so the shroud is now completely empty we have the cooling fan here so we have these two screws to take care of One and two. And that will remove. So this is what I meant with the um, the cooling fan being just a snap-on piece. Is if you see right here, you'll um, notice that it just it comes right off. Just like that, see? So when this falls off, I thought it was broken, but in fact, it is just um, a little snap-on piece, just like that, see? So let's get rid of that. On the back of this, there is this screw hole right here, and this screw hole. This one here goes right here, okay? And this one here goes over here. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So here's the shroud. Here's this. I am going to attempt to... So to see this channel here? This has got to go inside this channel, right? Right there. Like this. All right. Then it should pretty much almost line up exactly where you need it to. So once we have it where it is supposed to be lined up, we will um, screw in the um, hex bolts, the one right underneath where the BL touch mount is, and then we will move on to do the one behind. So back here. And we move on to replacing the hot end cooling fan. Just note that the sticker faces towards the hot end, not towards the outside. So the air will blow inwards towards the hot end. On to the parts fan now. Um, you'll um, mount this so the blower faces downwards into the hole, and then you should have two screws left over to mount this. And the last part is to reinstall your BL Touch if you are using one 
Again, you don't need to use one with this mount. I do have one, so I will be reinstalling it. You will have to redo your Z offset with this because it will adjust. On to the overhang test. So I am printing the same G code as I printed earlier, but now we are printing it with the new shroud. And we will do a comparison when it's done. So the print's done with the new shroud on there. Let's have a look at it. Um, pull this off of the bed here and see if this is actually better or worse or the same. Um, I'm going to zoom in over here so you guys can have a look. So the comparison for the before and after, um, I'm going to put that up on the screen big right here. That way you can see that um, the, bef um, the before and after for the part cooling side of the duct, as you can see, they're very, very similar. It doesn't really look like there's a change at all. And the um, other side now is um, you look at it and you see it does show some improvement. So this is uh, a decent improvement um, stock for your Aquila. I'd like to see this remixed with a uh, blower fan on it. So funny, I just had to interrupt that video right now. This is again the stock. Now the one thing I did notice with the stock that there is a bit of a gap um, between the blower and the fan. I just put a little piece of electrical tape there and that seemed to seal it. I noticed that a little bit of uh, air was coming out the side from the blower so that actually improves the cooling down below here. But now, it's funny that I just said I wanted this remixed for a um, blower fan. So what I've done is I am currently in the process of just testing this and remixing this for a blower fan. So I need to um, just make sure my holes are all lined up properly here and make sure the shroud is sitting properly. But yeah, I'm going to actually post this uh, in my Dropbox. And I'll leave you guys a link at the end of the video for this as well. If you want to replace this stock parts and the cooling fan with a blower option, I'll be able to give you that. Okay, so back to our video. This is a low cost improvement that you don't have to change any hardware on whatsoever on this printer. You just need to um, change out the fan shroud. It's actually in my opinion, this is easier to actually work on your fans and stuff rather than the uh, stock shroud because they're all easy access. You can get to them right away. But as it is, I think it's a decent little improvement for this printer. So thanks so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. Leave me a thumbs up. Leave some comments below. If you've tried a different cooling system, let me know what you think. And until next time, peace out.